Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob Has a Podcast. And now here's the guy who's also afraid to make a big move out of my house for anything. Rob Sestradino, hello everybody and welcome to our live Big Brother 16 wrap-up. It's a Wednesday night. It is September 3rd, our first Big Brother podcast of September. We're in the home stretch. Big Brother will end three weeks from tonight. Survivor will begin three weeks from tonight. And uh, we're going to get into talking about the home stretch on a huge show tonight. First, uh, let's bring in the man who uh, is always worried that his internet will blow up uh, when he's watching the live feeds. Here's Brian Lynch. Brian, how are you? I'm well. I am always scared about my internet going out, but I was also scared about all those bomb blasts in the episode. Brian, is it true that you've thought about cutting your internet wires from these live feeds this season? Once my internet starts working, I back really far away from it and make sure not to touch it just so it won't go go down again. All right, and now our guest tonight, joining us for the second time this season, uh, when the Big Brother contestants compare their games to him, uh, they get insulted and not, and not flattered. Uh, here he is, Mr. Andy Heron. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> Andy, welcome back. It's great to be here, Rob. Thank you. Oh, good. Well, I'm very excited to have you back. I thought it was uh, great fun the last time we had you on. I know that there are some people uh, who don't like hearing from you, but I think you are one of the best Big Brother guests and uh, oh, always always happy to have you back on. Yeah, I read all of the app mentions on the tweet that you posted about this. And so <laughs> many people were just like, I'm not tuning in. I hate it. Oh, should we check some of them? <laughs> should we? <laughs> I usually don't like to give a voice uh, to the haters, but uh, I typically don't get hate tweets uh, when I say, like, hey, check out check out this uh, show tonight with you know whoever whoever the guest is going to be. Uh, yeah. I, I don't typically get tweets. Uh, I'll, I'll make the name nameless. Uh, he has some nerve. He literally floated all his way to the finale. <laughs> uh, then somebody else wrote, uh, sorry, but I'm skipping this show. I don't need another dummy to tell me that these house guests are dumb. Uh, let's... A dummy. <laughs> Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, there were a there were a couple other ones, uh, but, it, but it was a a lot of uh you know won't be watching Andy. So a lot of people said yeah, uh, yeah that they would be skipping this one. All right, so you, we, we we will miss you, but yeah, unfortunately... I'm, so, I'm so sorry that you have such a low turnout, Rob. I mean, <laughs> if you want to get another guest last minute. No, we don't have a low turnout. It's just we're we're going to be missing some people tonight, so maybe it won't be a huge turnout for Andy. But anyway, very happy to uh, to have you back here on board. Uh, big show tomorrow night, double eviction night. I think we should be having a double guest night as well. Ian Terry will be back on Thursday, and then I believe Matt Hoffman will be joining us too. Ooh, for that's a, a good that's a good show. It's a good show. So yeah, that'll be Thursday that. night. Uh, we'll be live at 10:15 p.m. Eastern, uh, seven. 15 Pacific after the Big Brother double eviction and who knows what could happen. It could be a it could be a crazy night. Ready? To, these house guests are ready to make a big move, Andy. Yeah, finally. I mean, come on. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And then uh, just uh, one more thing before we jump into the show tonight. Uh, if you pre-ordered the 49 Laws of Survivor, my new audio book with Stephen Fishback, uh, that just got delivered today. So check your email for that uh, and let me know if you haven't gotten it yet. Uh, you can email me, rob at robhasawebsite.com. All right, so we are live. we got the chat room going on, robhasawebsite.com. Scott St. Pierre is monitoring the hashtag, RHAP, and plus our YouTube channel. We're taking your questions, rob, uh, sorry, robhasawebsite.com slash YouTube. All right, Andy, yeah. um, I've been seeing your tweets all week, and it seems like you've been really on a theme of last year, around this time, you were making a big move to put together the exterminator. Yeah. Uh, can I use the beast mode cowboy terminology? Is it true you were the founding member of the Exterminators? I would say so. I mean, I'll give Judd a little bit of credit, too. I feel like I planted the seed, and yet again, like my whole game, I put the idea in Judd's head, and then he did it. I mean, Judd came back after getting re-entry into the house, and I don't know if this was on the feeds or not, but I pulled him into the storage room, and I told him, the only people that you could trust in this game are me, Gina Marie, and Spencer. And then later that night, the four of us happened to be outside, and Judd was like, why don't we all work together? And I was like, yes, yes, you know? So I would say that, yes, I did. Long story short. I am the founding member of the of the Exterminators. Yep. One of the most popular lines in Big Brother history, I should add. Yes, yes. People, it's beloved by, People by it. all. Yeah. Yeah, one of the most popular alliances of all time. All right, so Andy, 
what are what are you seeing uh, under you know through through that uh, perspective that uh, is not going on in Big Brother 16? I mean, I think that their games are very different, but I think in terms of running the house, like overtly running the house, you've got Derek, and then my season you had Amanda, you know. And I mean, you stay with that player for as long as you can because they're so good at what they're doing. But then I think now is the time in the game to get rid of that player. And it's very surprising to me that no one can see that. You know, I mean, I feel like Christine and Frankie can kind of see it, but not even really. I think they're targeting each other, which is stupid. They should be targeting Derek. Um, but I mean, I think that Caleb, Cody, and Victoria are completely blind to it. and It just blows my mind. I had a lot of hope that Cody, kind of at this point in the game, would make a move to go against Derek, and I just don't think he's going to. See, I feel like you're comparing uh, your yourself uh, not to Derek, and you're comparing Derek to Amanda. Do you feel like a man that Derek is going to have a similar fate to Amanda in the game? Because See, I don't I know. Kinda... I, like, I, I mean, I, I think that Derek is, Derek is kind of a hybrid of me and Amanda. I mean, I think that Derek is manip- like my thing was I was a coattail rider, you know. But as long as the coat that I was riding was getting the work done for me, that's what I needed to do, you know. Amanda was like the coat that I wrote on. Derek is not doing a lot of coattail riding. Derek is getting what he wants and putting ideas in people's heads and getting them to work. Um, but Derek is also, I feel like Derek is also downplaying that like I did. You know, Derek is making everyone think that they're stronger than he is. He's making everyone think that he's, a, he's, that he's innocuous, which, was, which is what I was really good at. And so I think Derek's kind of playing a, like a weird hybrid game of me and Amanda. Is it fair to say Derek is a floater? Um... No, because Derek's been, like I said, Derek's been steering everything. Derek's been getting what he wants. I mean, if, like, because De- Derek positions himself like he's a floater. Like, he constantly says, well, I'm cool with whatever, but then he'll put ideas in people's heads, and he's not cool with whatever, and he gets people to do what he wants, you know? I don't mean it in a bad way. I Like, yeah. I just, uh, that I think by definition, isn't Derek a floater that he doesn't win competitions, and yeah. yes. he goes yes. and works with whoever is in power for that week? Yes, I would say that. By, like, the Rachel Riley kind of cardboard, very easy-to-digest definition of a floater, I guess he's a floater, yeah, because he's throwing things, you know? Yeah, and so I'm not sure if Derek is playing necessarily the Dan Giesling game because yeah. I feel like if he, if he was playing the Dan Giesling game, I feel like at this point in time uh, he would start trying to win competitions, and yeah. I don't feel like that he is necess- – I mean, as of tonight, he's throwing the veto competition. Yeah. And do you I think – yeah, no, I, I think that in the next couple weeks we will see him really trying to win. Like, I think that he's going to be – I mean, he doesn't need to win still. I mean, I remember at this point last season I, did, I threw the veto. It was the Bowl Arena, and I blatantly threw it. You know, I did not want to win it. And so I was still doing that at this point. And then after the double was when I was like, shit, I really need to win things, you know? And I feel like he if, he if he survives the double, which I think he will, I think that we'll see him really pushing to win. I thought it was a very interesting sequence about Derek tonight. And I tweeted about this that I felt like that Derek is starting to own his edit a, a little bit more. And Brian, yeah. to, to jump in if you, th- if you disagree with, uh, with what I'm saying. But I f- kind of feel like it seems to me like Derek had to dance around the Donnie thing while, he was in, while Donnie was in the house and try to make it like, Donnie, Team America, I'm working for you. I'm trying to make things happen. I'm trying to save you, Donnie. I'm trying. To, we're trying to do this, and he really wasn't. But now, no, no. But but now I I kind of feel like the way that he was describing about, hey, watch this. Now I'm gonna go talk to Caleb, and now I'm gonna do the. Here's my four point plan of here's how I'm gonna make Caleb want to take me to the end. I felt that was somewhat refreshing for Derek. That I like hearing. Here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm doing. And now we get to watch that happen. I completely agree with you. I think this was Derek. I think tonight was Derek's best episode of the season when it comes to like his diary rooms and his strategy. And yeah, I agree that he did not come off as disingenuous because or disingenuous because with Donnie, I mean, if you watch the feeds, it was obvious that Derek wanted Donnie out so bad, and then he was just trying to kind of bullshit America to make them think that he was like on board when he wasn't. You know? Yeah. Brian, uh, what's your take on that? I know we've agreed uh, all through the season that we felt like uh, Derek has been uh, disingenuous in the diary room. Did you feel like tonight was a bit of a change for him? Well, it's kind of refreshing to see them say something like that and and give step-by-steps what I'm going to do, especially when it makes sense. But to me, it was kind of disingenuous because he already had Caleb in his back pocket. So he's going to explain to us how he's going to rip Caleb away from Frankie 
when Caleb will do whatever he says anyway. He knew what the outcome of that conversation was going to be. That that diary room was about convincing us of something. Yeah, but I don't have a big problem with that. That he's explaining something that he already that he already had done. I don't think that's that uh, big of a deal. And I, I like that he's sort of ex explaining what he's doing. Like I've I've said uh, throughout the season that I feel like Derek is is a, a very very uh, good player of the game, like Dan, but he's not a showman in the way that Dan was. And because of that, Derek has been worse TV. But yeah. I feel like that they're I mean. I do think they're shoving Derek down our throats uh, to a degree of like, oh, look how great Derek is to set set him up to look very good as the eventual winner of this show because a lot of people didn't like the last winner that they had. So they <laughs> want to try to really make us like the new winner, right? Well, yes. Dr. No. Pepper out. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I think that I really do feel like Derek has the exact same problem I had where Derek – Although Dan, the first time Dan played Big Brother, Dan was not super entertaining. Dan was entertaining the second time that he played when he knew to play up to the cameras. Give me another shot at playing. I'll talk to the damn cameras. I think I'll Dan was pretty good in, in Big Brother. Dan was good in Big Brother 10. Come on. Sorry, my, my phone just froze. I didn't hear what you just said. I said Dan was good in Big Brother 10. Come on, Andy. No, he was very good at the game, but I feel like he still, I mean, he was likable in the diary room, but he didn't have these, like, grandiose plans and things. I mean, I think he made for much more thrilling TV on Big Brother 14. What about replacement nominee Roulette, Andy? Eh, I don't know. What, are you a Jerry fan? No, I'm not a Jerry fan, but I feel Hold on. Oh, see, you mess, with, you mess with Dan, and now your internet starts to get messed up. Right, Brian? Uh, exactly. I, I was thinking about this earlier when Andy was talking about it because uh, Derek kind of has the the Memphis and and the Danielle in one season. So is is he trying to play like both Dan games in one season? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we lost. See, that was the last thing that Andy got to say on the matter, and then we lost his connection. So we'll get we'll get Andy uh, patch back in. All right, Brian. I'm interested to know from you, and a lot of other people are as well. You had tweeted during the show that the events that transpired did not happen in the order that Big Brother portrayed them on the show. So could you give us a rundown of what happened when without giving away any spoilers? Right. So right after the veto was played, Derek started having conversations with Victoria, telling her that you know she was going to be okay up on the block because Nicole was going to be going. And he was campaigning to get Nicole out all the way up until we saw him in the, in the Have Not Room with Cody where he says he's going to go with his plan to backdoor Frankie. Um, he also said in that... I that am he, back, sorry. All right, okay. Andy is back. Andy, Brian was explaining to us how uh, the events from the episode did not reflect what actually happened on the live feeds. Yeah. All right, so, tell, all right, uh, so let's uh, keep going, Brian. All right, so... Um, when he was talking about actually trying to save Nicole, there was no actual attempt to save Nicole. What he did was go down and tell Nicole that he had planted seeds to save her because Caleb, had, he had already decided that he was going to backdoor Frankie. And then when Derek went back upstairs and had talked to Caleb about it or whatever, um, Caleb had already been to the diary room, and they must have had some kind of question and answer session with him that led him to believe that from what he said that the Grande, it would be bad for him about the Grande Army. Or I can't remember exactly what it was. He was scared of the Grande Army. That's why Frankie didn't get back door. Okay, so it wasn't due to Derek? No. Derek was really trying to take credit with Nicole and capitalize on her being saved. And, then, and so he said, well, we're going to do this. And then when it came time for him to actually campaign for it to happen, Caleb had already changed his mind. Okay. So, all right. So, uh, Andy, everything okay over there? Yeah. Um, um, just my our internet is like the shoddiest internet in the history of the world, and so sometimes it just gives out. Bear with me. Like, uh, I have talked. I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm sorry. So. All right. Well, maybe okay. at some maybe at some point, if you come into some money, you could get your internet. Uh, we we up literally speed. pay like 150 dollars a month for it, and it's terrible. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. So, I, my apologies. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway. All right. So that in the episode, they made it seem like that Nicole and Derek had a sleepover party, and then Nicole said, "Oh my God, Derek, 
You're like a Dan Geesling in your game. It's so good. And then he's like, hey, she's thinking I'm like Dan Geesling. I got to get rid of her now. She, I can't have that happening, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all of this, all of this, he could be. Um, the, he could have been given accurate diary rooms. I'm going to give him a little break here. He could have been given accurate diary rooms the whole time, and then production just arranged them in the order to make it look like however they want it. Okay, um, Andy, I want to talk about uh, Caleb's decision here tonight to yeah. not put Frankie up on the block. Uh, I know you love big moves. So, what is your take on Caleb's decision not to put? Uh, Frankie up because I felt like he did have a good point it, at the end of the episode. He's like, "Hey, ultimately, at the end of the day, I didn't put Frankie up on the block because I don't think he's coming after me, and so I'm gonna leave him. If I if I don't, if he comes after me, it's just a game. I don't care. But at the end of the day, I gotta do what's best for Beast Mode Cowboy." Yeah, I no, I I kind of agree with that. I like yeah. I'm actually. I'm the biggest. I think fans are so wrong when they're just like, "You're a terrible player because you don't make big moves." And it's like, no, terrible players make big moves when they don't need to make make big moves. Don't never ever in Big Brother make a big move unless you have to make a big move. Yeah. And so I I kind of agree with that. I think it's easy to put up Victoria. No one's gonna be mad about it. You know. I think I don't think Caleb made a bad choice. Yeah, we go through this a lot on Survivor too because there's a lot of uh, Jeff Probst is always saying like, "Hey." You want to win this move, win this game. You got to make big moves. You got to make oh. big moves. But big moves does not equal necessarily good moves. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Yes, yes. Big, yeah. Big moves need to be very strategically plotted out, and you should never ever make one when you don't have to. Yeah, and sometimes big moves are good moves, and sometimes little moves are, are good moves. But it's exactly. not necessarily the bigger the move, the the better. That that's I think what the better he wants. I honestly think the better the player, the fewer big moves they're going to have to make because they're making enough small moves to put themselves in a good position, you know? Like yeah. If you, look at, if you look at Derek, what huge moves has he made all season? None. Yeah. You know, that's, he's made a bunch that's a good of point. Moves. Yeah, I, I actually I think that there's a lot of sense to that where if you're controlling things, then you don't really ever need to be in a position to uh, make yeah. a big move. Well, and, like, I honestly feel like if Derek wins this season, I think Derek will be the best winner in the history of Big Brother. Because, and, like, I know people, like, I just, like, I just saw Dan tweet, like, like at some point you have to overcome adversity, but for it to go this long, for him to have no adversity, that's amazing, you know? I mean, and that takes so much work. Do you think it's just in this particular season? Like, if Derek was on another season, would he have as I easy mean, of a time? You could. I feel like you could argue that for every season. Like, I feel like if you if you look back at season fourteen with the coaches, like there were there were not that many super bright, amazing people on that scene. If you look at my se in my season, we were we were like the season of horrible racists. If you look at season thirteen, like all those newbies weren't very strong. I mean, season ten, like. They had Jerry and Rennie in the house. Every competition was geared so that Jerry and Rennie wouldn't die because they were each, like, 70 years old, you know? I mean, like, you could look at it any way like that. Every season, you could say that there's weak competition, you know? I think that the best players are able to take that weak competition and mold their game around it so that it works in their favor, you know? I mean, so what if these people are dumb? They're all dumb enough to fall for Derek's plans, you know? Okay, so... Christine won the power of veto tonight, was able to take herself off the block. Andy, you've been a pretty vocal Christine supporter. Were you pumped up to see her win the veto? Yeah, I, well, I think Christine is the second smartest person in the house, and I think that Christine kind of has the same problem that everyone else has had this season, where she can't gain any traction, you know? I mean, like, she's smart. She's got ideas that she knows, but, like, she's low men on the totem pole in the bomb squad or low woman on the totem pole, but she won't know how to listen to her or work with her, you know? And so, I mean, I really, really, really am hoping that Christine wins HOH during the double tomorrow because I think she would not be afraid to take out, like, a Frankie or someone who's, like, a big player like that. But um, why if Frankie... I mean, what is Christine's plan here? I was wily enough where if she can survive the double, I think she could, like, plant some seeds with... Vict I know Victoria doesn't really like her very much, but I feel like Victoria she hates people her. down. And, I know, Victoria hates her. But I still feel like... She could maybe, uh, maybe not Victoria, but like maybe like a Cody. I feel like she could sit him down and be like, "Listen, Derek is running everything. Like you will not win against him because I feel like Derek has Cody and Caleb so bamboozled that they think that he's like this weak player and they can beat him. I feel like Christine is like the one person, or maybe Frankie could do it too to talk some sense into these people and get them to take Derek out." 
Yeah, I think that Christine would probably, I think her best move is to go with Frank, like pull Frankie away from the four guys. I feel like the three guys are pretty oh, I agree. Which stuck would together. Be annoying because Christine and Frankie, I feel like at least from what I've seen on the feeds, it sounds like they're targeting each other if they win the double. And I think it would be so smart for Christine, for Christine and Frankie to team up against those three guys. Yeah. I think that's another key of a really great player in one of these games, whether it's Survivor or Big Brother. If you can get the people who should be working together to be working against each other, I yeah. think that's when you're doing a really, really good job. Like, find yeah. the two people that should be, that you say, these two people, if they got together, they could destroy me. And then if you have them destroying each other, then that's the ultimate win. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, interesting, Brian. Uh, you brought up that the reasons why Caleb didn't want to put Frankie on the block was because he was afraid of the Grande army coming after him. Uh, is that is that really the reason? That's one of the things that he yeah. said. Now, he gave other reasons um, that made more sense that he probably should have went with. Uh, as like, like, I agree with y'all that it's better for him not to go after Frankie. It's a better move because Frankie's more likely to be on his side than um, on... I don't know, actually. Listen, at the end of the day, Frankie is a mogul. I can't go up against that. I don't want all the Frankie lovers tweeting at me all day long. That guy is huge. Everybody loves that. that guy. He said he wanted to be able to have a country music career after this or some kind of music career, and that he needs help with that, too. And if he would have went against Frankie, it would have ruined his chances, that kind of stuff. I got music in me. I'm going to make an uh, album like Chase Rice. Beast Mode Cowboy. <laughs> What's up? I mean, I, I Open up that path. Like, I feel like these house guests are going to be very, very surprised when they get out of the house and see how much Frankie is disliked by the fans. Like, it doesn't ever. I mean, I think everyone still thinks Frankie's probably loved, don't they? No, um, I'm pretty sure Derek knows exactly what's up. Okay. Yeah. So, Andy, would you buy the Beast Mode Cowboy uh, CD? No. <laughs> Come on, why not? Uh, well, number one, I, I'm not into country music. It's not my thing. And number two, I, I, I mean, no offense to Caleb, but I just can't imagine. I feel like maybe his aspirations of a musical career are just as grandiose as everything else that he says. And so I'm not imagining that he's probably the most talented musician in the history of the world. Now, uh, did you buy Gina Marie's CD? <laughs> I did. I yeah, did buy there you go. Yeah. I I feel like Gina Marie and Beast Mode Cowboy actually have a lot oh, in common. Gina Marie, I mean, Gina Marie is my girl. I spent 90 days with Gina Marie. Like, Gina Marie and I are like this. Uh, I don't know if Caleb and I will be that close once the show's over, but we'll see. <laughs> they yeah, should probably. do a collaboration. Yo, could they collaborate Gina Marie, Caleb, and Justin You know Bieber? what? I would buy that. I would for sure buy the Gina Marie, Caleb. I, I would tweet about it. I would, I, would, I would maybe give them a couple grand like, to back it up. I, I, would, I would support that. Okay. Uh, we'll see. Uh, can we talk a little bit about uh, Nicole's campaigning? Uh, Andy, have you been impressed with anything you've seen from Nicole in the two weeks she's been back okay. in the house? I have been impressed by Nicole's intuition. I feel like Nicole is right in the fact where she's just like, all these people are afraid to make a move and it's so frustrating. But at the same time, all these people have been working together for so long without her that I feel, like, I feel like it was just lost on deaf ears. You know, I mean, everything that she was saying, no one was ever going to really listen to her. Yeah. Except for maybe Victoria. But, like, Victoria, I feel like if someone hid behind the wallpaper and like, started talking to her, Victoria would think she was talking to the wallpaper. So. I thought it was funny when Nicole was in the diary room tonight and she was like, right now my best bet is Victoria to save me, and I guess that means I'm in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Andy, I also saw on Twitter you said you really liked this competition that they did tonight. I did, yeah. yeah. A new comp this season. It was fun, yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Yet, like maybe, and I, I have been in the house, so I know that a lot of these competitions are not as easy as they seem. But this one, my roommates and I were watching it, and we were like, "Oh, it's the green wire. Oh, it's the brown wire." Like we were like, it, it seemed very, very easy to us. Just like the one a couple weeks ago, where like I was floored. The boxing one, where they had to box the number of days. Like, all that you do in the Big Brother house is layer on talking about days. It blew my mind that they were all so bad at that competition. I was just like, how are these people not able to, like, these, it does not seem like these competitions have been that hard, and it's very surprising to me that they have, 
people are doing so poorly in them. Yeah. Oh, well... But I thought this competition was super fun. I liked the, the cartoon theme to it. I thought it was... I, I mean, it was very funny watching the bombs explode on everyone. Yeah, that was really good. That re it was really, really fun and really well done. Uh, yeah. If I could make one little nitpick about the competition, I'm not exactly sure how being the first person out in this competition correlates to wearing a dinosaur costume. I know it was dino might and it's a dinosaur, but I feel like that was a bit of a stretch to go with the dinosaur costume. I mean, I don't know. I, that was a stretch that I, 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 I wasn't too upset about it. I accepted it. I mean, maybe it is a little ridiculous, but you're talking about Big Brother. Like, is Big Brother ever really taken that seriously? <laughs> I mean, I remember, I might have said this last time, like, I remember at one point last summer, I was sitting strategizing with Judd and Spencer while they were wearing chicken suits, and I was like, what is happening to my life? I'm sitting in this soundstage of a house talking to two men dressed as chickens. Like, yeah. the show is absurd. Uh <laughs> It is absurd, and Dinosaur Cody has been, you know, he's been talking all summer about how he's going to confront people, how he's going to make a big move. He was pushing hard for Frankie uh, to go was, up on the yeah. block. Yeah. Um, no, he totally was, and I think that Cody, I do think that, like, a lot of people are just like, oh, Cody's so dumb, Cody's not going to make a move. Like, I think Cody is smarter than people give him credit for. I think Cody is, is perceptive in the fact that, like, I mean, I, I tweeted about this yesterday, Cody is good in playing the role of someone who is never a target, like no one is ever going after him, but he's also not a pawn. You know, people aren't just like, oh, we can throw Cody up there. And that's a really interesting position to be in, you know? I mean, that's a good position to be in. Like, I don't, I think, I don't think there's any scenario where Cody goes home in the double tomorrow. Yeah. In some ways, I kind of feel like he's almost in, like, the Hayden zone, not Hayden yes. boss. I was, Moss. I was just tweeting with Brittany Haynes or texting with Brittany Haynes about that, and she was saying that he's a total Hayden Moss, which I, I completely agree with. Yeah, what's her take on this season? We've been trying to get her for the podcast, but she has not been responsive yet uh, to, our, uh, to our appeals to join us. Yeah. Uh, well, does she, she see this as a brigade? She loves to give me a hard time, so basically all she does is tell me how much better this season is than my season. <laughs> um, but no, she was saying that she really wants Derek to win. I mean, she thinks that Derek is an amazing player, which I think everyone thinks. But she, yeah, she was saying that Cody is a very... She was like, if Cody wins, it'll be very similar to a Hayden Moss win. Okay, yeah. Uh, I don't disagree. I think Hayden probably did more and was a bigger, a bigger part. I, I think that there was nobody in the brigade that was as... as dominant strategically as Derek was. Yeah, I think I that was more of a collaboration, but I think that Cody probably would be in the Hayden role. Of well, I mean, I will, I'll say it right now. I think, I think Cody could go from a nothing player to the best player of the season if he cuts Derek at, like, final three. If, let's say, final three is Derek, Cody, and Victoria, Cody wins, final HOH gets rid of Derek, it's a John and Netta from last season all over again. You know what I mean? That's, that would be an absolutely amazing move. Yeah. I, just to make that comparison, uh, so so Derek is the Enzo, but better. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, so Caleb is the Lane of yeah. this group, and then yeah, so I so you need like the bra like the brains, like the good looking yeah. one, yeah. and then the, uh, the the muscle guy. And then Victoria is like the Kathy who somehow has <laughs> has like weaselled her way into all of this and has made it really really far. Yeah. So. So Christine is Brittany, and then and then is Frankie Matt Hoffman. Yeah, I would comp I would say that's a relatively sound comparison. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll ask Matt Hoffman about this tomorrow. Is Big Brother? Oh, I'm 16. sure he's going to be so excited to be you know to a friend to know that he's the Frankie. He's the Frankie, and it, does he have any famous relatives? We'll ask him. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, very interesting. So, you know, Andy, we've been tracking this the last couple of weeks about the. Uh, villain turn for Frankie. What's been your take on, on Frankie over the last week and a half or so? Yeah. I, like, as, as, like, a gay guy who has played Big Brother, I really, really want to support Frankie, but I just find Frankie so unlikable. Um, in recent episodes especially, just, like, when he, like, wanted to put on that play, I, like, just wanted to, I wanted to throw my TV off the balcony. I was, like, so pissed off by the whole thing. Just like the fact that he's so self-centered, he makes everything about himself. But at the same time, I will give I will give him the benefit of the doubt and just be like, hey, when you're in that house, it's this weird heightened environment. You don't always act like yourself. 
So I'm going to wait until I actually meet Frankie in real life to do if he's a horrible person or not. But I just think that Frankie has been incredibly grating on the feeds and on the show as of late. Now, is it true that you are couching your criticism because you, in fact, are looking to get a recording session with Justin Bieber? That's completely true. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm trying to spearhead my rap career. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, as far as uh, Frankie goes, I felt like the show did not do him a solid again tonight for the third or fourth episode in a row, where they showed him looking, I thought, pretty bad when he was talking about how much he did not care for Nicole and yeah. how he wanted to have an anvil fall on Nicole's head <laughs> during the competition yeah. and seemed to laugh about that. Yeah, yeah. I don't, no, I don't think that's doing him any favors for sure. And then can we talk about how it's so weird that, like, when, whatever they pan to him, like, they were doing it tonight. If people are talking about him, like, the clip that they use of him while, like, people are talking about him to reference who he is – is like clips of him like weirdly like sitting doing his makeup or just like primping and like looking in the mirror. It's very weird, you know? Yeah. They, it's always a weird shot that they use on those things. Like if, for some reason they tend to like, especially if they don't like you in the editing room, uh, yeah. they show like a lot of like people eating, like just like yeah. shoveling food in their face. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, I feel like there's a connection though that if if production likes you, like you never see like a pic, like a shot of like you know Derek like picking his nose like when they talk about him. Yeah. But you know, there's some people where it's like they're wearing on them. They should tend to show them like more and more and more unflattering shots. I mean, in the cut I love that. I was I was just, like I love that it's. I mean, we're now in the the very late end stages of the game, and Victoria is still getting the joke at it. You know, I mean. So. Yeah. Uh, no, absolutely. Uh, she she is uh, quite the jokester, Victoria. All right, let's take open this up to some questions with Andy, and then we'll talk about some of the stuff from the live feeds. Getting ready for the double eviction tomorrow. All right, here we go. This is a question from Survivor Fan Seven. Says, based on this episode, do you guys think production is continuing to give Derek the hero edit and Frankie the villain edit? I would say, Hundo. What do you yes. think, Andy? Yes, big time. I feel like it's it's getting more and more overt with every episode. Yeah, I know that Derek is, you know, they're showing him being responsible for some of the things that are happening in the house, but they're seeming like he's controlling everything in the house, but yeah. he's not doing it in a vindictive way. Like, they yeah. never show us Derek being like, man, I hate that bitch, Nicole. I can't wait to get yeah. her out of the house. Exactly. You know, uh, Victoria's, you know, uh, a dumb slut, and, you know, they, they never show him say anything like, outwardly negative it's like yeah. you know nicole she's a she's a smart she's a smart girl i got to get her out cuz she's a threat to me yeah. so good edit for derek you know I agree. I yeah, agree. you know a thing or two about good edits right andy i oh well here's the thing like can i just ask like, i i mean i watched my season back and may, I, I, maybe i'm biased but like I don't think I got that bad of an edit towards the end of the season. Like, I feel like they showed the jury house. Everyone in jury was saying how I was controlling things and backstabbing people. At the end, I feel like they edited it like I was possibly going to win. And I just, like, don't – And I mean, I could, it, if anything, I could see fans being, like, kind of, like, apathetic towards me and just being like, eh, whatever. But, like, I don't get the intense hatred. Like, I, I wasn't shown saying horrible things about people. Like, I mean, I said horrible things about people on the live feeds. But yes. you just watch the edited show. I don't think that my edit was that terrible at the end. Uh, I think that's probably a fair point. Brian, could you speak to that? Well, in your season, you ended up getting all the hate from the person that had all the big, huge following. So all the big, huge following came after you. Now, yeah. Frankie's big, huge following isn't going to go after him. It's just like everybody else is going to give him yeah. the hate. Yeah. Yeah. Andy, I think we, that we've reached a tipping point with the Frankie Grande stuff. I, I've been talking about this for the last couple of episodes of Rob as a Podcast, where you're starting to see more and more media outlets pick up stories about you know him being yes. a jerk and how hated yes. he is. Uh, we talked like, about there have, the, been, like, there have been lots of like prominent gay guys, and so, like Perez Hilton was just tweeting about it. You know? Oh I yeah. Mean, but, like, well, yes, the Perez Hilton thing, which we haven't talked about yet on the show. Um, we talked about on TMZ reported about how Victoria's family were was upset that allegedly he said that they should rape Victoria, even though he never yeah. said the word uh, rape. Uh, there was yeah, another yeah. clip that Perez Hilton posted of him making fun of Chaz Bono. Uh, yeah. And he's like, yeah, way to go, Frankie, that uh, that Chaz Bono's an, uh, an LG, uh, LGBT icon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I, mean, I feel like lots and lots and lots of people are turning on Frankie, you know? 
I think I saw a, it was either a BuzzFeed or an Uproxx story, or actually, I'm sorry, it was on Yahoo, of why Frankie Grande is the most hated Big Brother contestant of all time, Andy. Okay. Can you believe that? Uh, I mean, if, if we're going to go by, like, relative comparison, I feel like, let's say before Frankie Grande, I was the most hated gay guy. I think yeah, Frankie I was going to say, doesn't that make... More... Doesn't that make you a little mad that you were the most hated Big Brother <laughs> house guest of all time? Well, well, no, I'm not even kidding. I probably get 30 tweets a day of people just being like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry for thinking you were bad last summer. Now that we have Frankie, like, I take it all back. So oh, so people are like, <laughs> people have come <laughs> come back and apologized to you? Yeah, yeah. like, the, my, my haters have now experienced Frankie, and they're realizing that I, I actually wasn't the worst. So. Yeah, but you antagonize people on on Twitter. It's and true. It's true. I do. Tell me about this. There's an ongoing feud that you've been having on social media with. I see you post about it on Facebook. <laughs> Could you talk oh, about yeah. your ongoing feud with this woman? With Quisha Pretty G Marks. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, just so, for people who don't know this story, just real quick, could you tell us yeah. what's going on with that? Well, so maybe a couple months ago, I started getting tweets from this woman named Quisha Pretty G Marks, and I thought they were amazing. Like they were always in all caps with, like, lots of misspellings, just about, like, rid ridiculous ways that, like, if, if she was in the Big Brother house with me, she would, like, smash a chair on my back and throw my body in the pool, or she would, like, throw me off the balcony or, like, slam my head in the front door, things like that, and I thought they were very funny. So I started... All caps. Yep, in all caps. And so I started responding back to her in a very similar in a very similar manner. I mean, I, I also threatened to kill her in, like, multiple ways, as she did to me. And I honestly feel like Quisha started to develop a soft spot for me, and I think that she was kind of in on the joke. Um, but I then, like, basically one of my friends who works for Twitter was like, I'm just letting you know that, like, you could possibly get in trouble because you're, like, blatantly death-threatening this woman. And so you, like, might want to stop doing that. And so I was just like, oh, but even if it's a joke. And he was like, yeah, Twitter takes that relatively seriously. And so I, I'm no longer able to death threat Quisha like I used to. And so I've got to make up new ways to amuse myself with her. But, I mean, me and her are still just as happy together. We're going just as strong. But I can't make as ridiculously overt tweets back to her anymore. Okay. It is very funny to, fo to follow along. Yeah. No, she's she's very sweet. I mean, <laughs> I, I like <laughs> I really do no, but I really do think she has warmed up to me, and I think she's now into every like. I think she's into me. I think that she likes me. Um, what if this is her diabolical she, plan to get you kicked off of Twitter? <laughs> Maybe. I, I don't know, but she um she never ceases to amaze me in, in everything that she says and does. I mean, my friends are all obsessed with her, uh. So she's she's lovely. And she's great. Okay, let's go uh, keep going. And uh, let's check in with Lance Davis, who says, In your opinion, did Caleb Beast Mode do it all make the wrong decision in not putting up Frankie versus Nicole for eviction? Could you guys break down the pros and cons of this move and whether or not it was a failed opportunity? Well, we said that we, uh, yeah. I don't have a problem with him not putting Frankie up because I think it was a good thing for Cody's game for Frankie to go up on the block, but yeah. I don't really have a big problem with uh, it for Caleb's game because I feel like Frankie, he's not. Frankie's target. So, Agreed. in some ways, it was a, a selfish, a selfish move on his part. So, well, I feel like, and I feel like Nicole is scrambling. Nicole would have, Nicole would have gone after anybody during the double. If Nicole won HOH, whoever got into her ear first, she would have listened to him. You know? Yeah, I, I agree. And so, can you think of any good reason it would have been for Caleb to put Frankie on the block? I mean, I don't. I mean, Frankie is like very disloyal and like untrustworthy. But still, I I really don't think Frankie will turn on Caleb right away. Okay, let's take another question and let's go out to Catherine K. And Catherine K. wants to know, Rob, interesting to see the edit on Frankie, right? They showed him doing his makeup again. What is production's goal? Continue the Frankie hate movement? Uh, I believe the answer is yes. Yes. Big Brother is always best when we have someone to love and someone to hate. And after Donnie was out of the house, we did not have someone to love. Uh, we did not have somebody to, to hate. And, you know, Big Brother said, okay, all right, we're going to give you Derek, and we want you to hate Frankie. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And so, in, in fairness to Frankie, he's probably getting a bad edit at, at this point. Uh, do you think uh, Andy is... Is Frankie not as bad as he's being edited to be at this point? 
think he's worse. He's he worse. Can't, he's can't getting a good edit. edit. I was about to say he's getting a good edit. Yeah, yeah. Frank is he's getting worse. like the best edit of anybody in the house. <laughs> he's getting the best edit this season. Talk about he's gonna double team people and punch them in the face. No, call he's, in all he sorts said of names. he uh, said that Cody and Caleb should double team somebody. He didn't say he was gonna double team anybody. <laughs> Excuse. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. It's a fine line, right, Andy? What a, what a saint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to Chris Ashley. He says, uh, did you notice how Beast Mode said he was the Coyote and Christine was the Roadrunner? Doesn't he know the Coyote loses? Look, at the end of the day... All the cartoons that I watch, they don't matter. They all blur together. When I was an actor on the, doing voiceover on the set of Hanna-Barbera, I knew what was going on all the time. And I'm gonna, I have my own show that's an animated series coming to Comedy Central Thursday nights in the fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, the Beast Mode Cowboy. He's into everything. Yeah, I mean, Beast Mode Cowboy definitely messed up his cartoon references. But still, I mean... Uh, were we that shocked that he was unable to recall that accurately? I really don't think anyone was too surprised by that. Like, I, after he said it, my, my roommates and I all looked at each other, and we were just like, wait, the Roadrunner always outstarts the, the Coyote. Like, he doesn't want to be the Coyote, but I feel like he's the perpetual Coyote, so. Yeah. I, I can't believe Beast Mode Cowboy has the second best chance to win this game right now. The conciliatory yeah. confinement guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, let's go to Kyle Hand. Is Big Brother putting Frankie's chip near the bottom because he's a good compost? Yeah, I thought that Frankie would be excited to not have his name pulled so he can host the competition, Andy. I will I will attest to this. The It's a very shallow like chip bucket, and there's no way to put a chip at the bottom. I mean, you stick your hand all the way to the bottom, you ruffle through everything. So the, I, I think there's no way that they're, like, leaving Frankie's chip out or anything or putting it strategically somewhere where they can't get it. I think it's just chance. I mean, if, my season, my chip didn't get drawn for the first eight weeks. I didn't play in the first eight veto competitions. And did you care? That's how it works sometimes. What? Did you care? Hell no. I didn't want to play in any of the veto competitions. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go to uh, the next question from R. Vandervest, who says, Is Christine and Caleb unaware of the detonators? They keep referring to the bomb squad. Well, I think that Christine was uh, referred to the bominators. Is that what she called them? I don't know what Christine was saying. Like, I, Christine, yeah, I, I, I mean, I think Christine is very aware of the bomb squad being dismantled. Um, yes, she was but, in the detonators. She knows that there are detonators. Yeah. Beast Mode Cowboy, uh, Brian, does he just refuse to acknowledge that the detonators existed? Well, no, he knows that the alarm, he thinks that it was done for some strategic reason that was no big deal. Um, however, everybody else that was in the detonators are pretty much calling it the bomb squad because of Caleb and this reason, right? There yeah. was no well, I mean, good reason to make detonators. There already was Bomb Squad. Well, it's pointless. It's redundant. We're going back to Bomb Squad. Wasn't the detonators, I mean, wasn't the whole goal to get out competition beast master player Amber? I mean, <laughs> are we, are we're going back that far. <laughs> I don't think that was the reason they were formed. I'm I think the reason kidding. they were formed was just because they were there. Yeah. Uh, this is from uh, Alex Photopolis, who says, "Why is it frowned upon if you don't actively make the game harder on yourself? Uh, why is it frowned upon if you don't actively make the game harder on yourself?" Uh, I think that this question—it's a little bit of a riddle. I think that this question is referring to Derek. Why would we penalize uh, somebody? who is playing a very good game that he didn't have to go through adversity to yeah. say he's not as good as people who did go through adversity. We should have. He's better, he's, he's better than people that had to go through adversity. If you have to go through adversity, you've done something wrong to put yourself in that position, and he has not. So. But I wonder, though, uh, who is better, a person who goes through adversity and, and gets through it or the person who never experiences the adversity at all? I feel like from everything else I, I've learned about life, the person who goes through adversity and comes out of it is, I think, I would put my money on that person over a person who's never had to face the adversity. Well, yes, I would say in life, but I feel like the Big Brother game isn't life. I mean, the Big Brother game, you, like, 
life isn't, you're not actively trying to screw over everyone in your path in life either, you know? I mean, in the Big Brother house, if you don't Speak have for to yourself, go Andy. If you don't have to go through adversity, why on earth would you want to go through adversity? Um, I, like, I mean, I feel like my season, I was nominated once, but, like, I wasn't even in danger that week. And, I mean, it it was it was great. I mean, I, if, if someone would say, like, oh, well, would you have rather, like, been in, like, been in the worst game possible week four and gotten out of it? Hell no. Like, if I could have an easy week four, give me an easy week four. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go to uh, Nick Towns, who says, question for Andy. I love how you handle the Twitter trolls. Uh, what about Cody's game makes you want him to win BB-16? Is that your pick? You want Cody to win BB-16? I mean, the other day I tweeted, and I feel like it's just kind of my... I, I want to just get in Cody's brain and like make get Cody to make the move against Derek because I think that would be so thrilling. And so I'm going to say, if Cody turns on Derek or whoever's like in power towards the end, I would love to see him win. If he doesn't, I would love to not see him win because I don't think he deserves it. If Cody wins Big Brother, Andy... Yeah. Is Cody best looking Big Brother winner of all time? Oh. Um male males, yes. Like hands down, one hundred and ten million percent. Uh I mean Jordan's kind of a little cutie pie. Um, but I would say that yes, he's probably the most attractive winner ever. Okay. Lisa Donahue's really hot too, so Okay. All right. We'll see. We'll have to uh put it in the computer and see what it what it spits out. Yeah. Um <laughs> uh, I I was gonna say uh talk about some something else but I will uh, I, I will decline oh oh uh, let me go into this uh, Derek with the 5,000 hollas um, I have to say in addition to getting the the good guy edit I feel like Derek needed a thing and I feel yeah. like this is a thing for Derek and I think yeah. it's making him more likable yeah I mean I, I don't think Derek's unlikable anyway but I do think this humanizes him a little bit yeah yeah I think it's a, I think it's a thing. I think they've sort of just like given a catchphrase to him, and I think uh, now that he has a thing, it's like, oh, Derek, oh yeah, he's the holla guy. Holla, yeah. holla. Open up that mouth. <laughs> holla. I I do like when they just do it for no reason. They just uh you know uh insert it like randomly into the show. Yeah. Okay, let's do one more question. Let's talk about the live feeds. Uh, Geek of Geeks, at this point in the game, is it urgent to make big game moves in the house? Yes. Well, it depends yes, who you are, though, is. right? What? It depends who you yeah. are. Yeah, yes, it, to it totally does. But if, I feel like if you want to win, you need to be the person that, like, this is the point in the game where once you get to Final Five, you need to be the person that is in the reins. You need to be controlling everything if you want to win. And, I mean, if Derek can continue to do that, amazing. If Cody overthrows Derek, amazing. If Christine is able to overthrow Derek somehow, amazing. But whoever is the person that takes the reins at the end is the person that deserves to win. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the live feeds. All right. So we're going to, going to live feeds. If you're going to bounce out now, we'll be back tomorrow night. Matt Hoffman, Ian Terry are going to be a very, very fun show after the double eviction. Okay. Here we go. All right, we're in the spoiler territory. Brian, could you give us an updated vote count for tomorrow night? Uh, well, I'm assuming it's going to be a unanimous vote to get rid of Nicole. Unanimous Unless vote. Get some kind of sympathy vote somewhere. You guys, come on. Yeah, Cody and Derek were kind of worried that uh, Caleb may have told Frankie a bunch of the stuff about getting, you know, having him backdoored. Um, Cody and Derek have been talking about how they think it's a huge mistake that they didn't do that. Yes. Um, obviously, yeah. they made no attempt. Derek made no attempt to get uh, Frankie actually backdoored, as this episode suggests happened. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of talk on Twitter on Monday that, that Caleb was going to put Frankie up. How close did that come? He came to a conclusion that he was going to do it on his own. Um, well, mm. unless you want to give Cody credit for helping them get there without Derek them two decided that they are going that uh, Caleb's going to do that and then that's kind of when Derek decided well this is what I want to and then he went around starting to take credit for it and telling you know Nicole that that's the reason he had planted seeds and stuff to help her stay off the block and that, and he's the reason that she was safe and then it just didn't go down Caleb changed his mind changed his mind Andy yeah unassisted it's a beast mode's prerogative what are you going to do? Um, Brian, can I ask you about something that uh, I saw a lot of people talking about on Twitter? Did Christine give her wedding ring to Cody to wear? 
What? I did not see that. <laughs> so a lot of people were tweeting tweeting this to me. Andy, have you heard what? this? No, I, have not, I did not see that either. Okay. All right. Well, sometimes these things take on a life of their own. And I, I, and I apologize for, uh, I don't mean, mean to uh, get in the midst of the telephone game if this is a unconfirmed thing. I don't want to doubt that she might have taken it off and shown it to him or something, and he could have put it on, but I don't know that that's happened. I don't think it's a big deal. He must have very skinny fingers, if that's the case. I don't well, know. You could always put it on your pinky. Yeah, whoa. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's take some, some more... Uh, uh, we'll take some more questions in, in a minute. Uh, let's talk about the double eviction, and let's talk about how we think it's going to go down, because we have coming up, all right, double eviction. We'll get down to six people in the house. Beast Mode Cowboy cannot play in the HOH. So, Andy, who will win the HOH tomorrow night in the double eviction? I think the best chances... Ugh, it's tough. I mean, I guess it just depends on what it is. I think it might be a questionnaire, which would put Cody... or I mean, I'm sorry, which would put Christine or Frankie maybe in the lead to, to win. Um, now, but if it's, if it's physical, it could it could easily be Cody. Uh, how many people were left in the double eviction the the night that you sent home uh, Amanda and then Alyssa in the double eviction? Uh, it was the exact it, same week. Okay, so there were seven people. Amanda was yeah. was seventh. Okay, yep. so they were in the same exact spot, and and you uh, quite masterfully, maybe uh, maybe your second finest moment in the house, uh, second only to winning the game, uh, when you were able to con convince Alyssa. Well, what did you convince Alyssa? Uh, I convinced Alyssa that McCray voted Amanda out. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> of course he would. And so, uh, and then we're able to uh, get Alyssa to. I don't even remember the specifics. I just remember. No, it was. I, I convinced. That was the bonus. I yeah, I convinced Alyssa McCray voted Amanda out. I convinced McCray Alyssa voted Amanda out. Yes. All right. So uh, it was very. And you actually voted Amanda out. It's, yes, I did. Yes. Okay. Good. The, 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 thank you for the reminder. Uh, so that was the double eviction in this week last year. So yeah. what is going to happen tomorrow night? I mean, I th I feel like it's it's quite up in the air. I feel like there. I I mean, I don't think it does not look great for Christine, if I'm being honest. Um, but I also feel like it doesn't look great for Frankie. Like Brian, would you agree that I feel like those are the top two that can potentially go? Correct, and I think probably one of them will win, like you were saying, and then the other one will be there will be a push to target that person from the Derek Cody group. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Who do we think is in the the most danger? Christine. Christine. Brian? Uh, yeah, based on what we've seen, uh, yes, Christine. However, uh, if they are thinking that uh, there's a bad idea not to get rid of Frankie and all of this has gone down, if they think that he's gotten wind of something, then they may just switch the target to Frankie. It's going to yeah. be such a bummer, I feel like, that it's going to be down to just those four guys in Victoria, potentially, after tomorrow night? Yeah. Well, there'll be six, right? So there'll be... There'll be five. five. There's seven now, right? So we're going to have a double eviction. Oh, well, yeah, you're right. Double five. eviction, five. Oh, man. Um, you know what would be fun, though? If you have those guys up there and then Victoria wins the HOH then uh, next week. <laughs> I don't know what it could be that she, she wants Cody it. out. Why? Because she's jealous of uh, his relationship with Derek. Is that what it is? Oh my yeah. god! I believe so. Oh my god! Uh, however, of course, Derek could pretty much run her HOH and get that switched around. But un uh, untampered with, she naturally wants Cody out. Okay. What would be the most interesting person to win uh, during the double eviction? Would it be Christine to win HOH? What do you think, Andy? I think it would be Christine winning because I think Christine. I uh, I'm sad because I think she would possibly target Frankie, even though I don't think that would be her best move. But I think that she is the most independent thinker in there, and she could have a trick up her sleeve, you know. Yes. Um. Emily on Twitter is asking me, can you talk about the message banner that flew over the BB house? So, Brian, there was a banner plane that said something like, what was it like? Uh, hey, Derek and Frankie are America's saboteur, but the house guests didn't see it, right? Uh, that's what I heard, is that the, they had called an indoor lockdown and they were all inside before any of them saw it. And if they have seen it, no one's talked about it. Yeah. So... 
does it even make sense for anybody to send a banner? Don't they? What was the last time a banner worked on Big Brother? You, you got, if you're going to do banners, you would just have to target the, a, a possible um, endurance comp. There's no other way to do it. Or you're just wasting money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, that's oh, uh, is that why we hadn't seen the endurance comps this season? Well, no, we haven't seen endurance comps because of the Battle of the Block. It's just so hard to set up endurance comps. Andy, they've had a problem this season with people getting like a bullhorn and going uh, behind the Big Brother house. Did you guys yeah. have anything like that this last season? No, no, we never did. The only thing, the only voices we ever heard one night during the veto that I won, actually, it was like the stay or fold, like the counting one. We it came down to me and Spencer, and like we were waiting for them to announce who had won, and some girls started singing really loudly on the lot, and we had to like stop taping for like a half an hour. And that was the only time that we ever heard any voices. We never got any shout-outs or anything, which surprises me that people weren't just like, Aaron's a racist, or like, kill Amanda, you know, like, but we never got anything like that. You would think that you would have heard it from enough people saying it just on the street at the same time. Yeah, right? Andy, if we brought you into the Big Brother back lot with a bullhorn, what would you say? Um, oh, man. You know um... what? I wouldn't, say any I wouldn't say anything. I don't want to ruin anyone's game. I don't think that's fair. Uh, I would maybe just like yell, I don't know, like, I love you, Christine, or like something just because she's been getting so much hate. But like, I would not want to yell any, anything specific to the game. Did you just hear Christine? It said, I love you, Christine, and we got to get her out of the house now. She's yeah. popular. See, no, yeah, see, that's why I wouldn't even say that because, yeah, that gets screw Christine over. I would, I, would, I, would, I would smash the bullhorn on the ground. I wouldn't say anything. <laughs> All right, Survivor Fan Seven says, "Who is most likely to be the second one evicted in the double eviction?" We say Christine, right? Yeah. Okay. We think Christine will is probably gonna go home. Uh, is there any chance? I mean, this... Let, give me the oh, scenario. Gonna... Give me the scenario. Is there any chance Derek could go home tomorrow night? No. What would have to happen? Christine would have to win H O H. Christine yeah. wins H O H. Who does she like... put? Let's and then he would have to. Get... He'd have to get on the block, like indirectly, I think. And then I honestly feel like she would have to put. She, I feel like she would have to put up like Derek and Caleb or something. Derek and Caleb. All right, Derek and Caleb are on the block. Everybody votes. Frankie votes to evict who? Derek. Okay. Cody votes to evict who? Caleb. I don't know. That's the thing. I feel like Cody and Victoria might vote to keep Derek. Yeah. I don't think he would. I don't know if he would go home. Very interesting. It's gonna be a it'll be a fun double eviction tomorrow night. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Caitlin wants to know: Do you think production reads the various social media sites and sees how upset the fans are over the season? If so, why aren't they doing anything to change the season, like adding a twist, a diamond power veto, Pandora's box, etc.? All right. Uh, I might be opening Pandora's box here, but Brian, do you think that the people, the production reads uh, all of the different message boards and social media sites? and has a, a good finger on the pulse of the people who uh, may or may not be happy with this season. Yes, I think they do. Yes. But I think they won't ever admit that they do. So do you think that, do they change things based on what the people are saying on message boards and stuff? I don't think they proactively try to manipulate the game other than setting certain twists in the rules that those, you know, and I believe that is manipulation. That's the kind of manipulation they set up. I don't believe that they go into the diary room and say, hey, we can't have this person leaving. We've got to do something about it in this conversation. Andy, what's your take on this? Because, I, I mean, do they even care? Because haven't the ratings been good this season? Yeah, I think the ratings have been really good. I, I never once, and I know I've said this many, many times, I never felt like our season, anything was rigged in anyone's favor, you know? Yeah. Um, spoken like somebody who maybe it was rigged for. Yeah. Well, yeah. It was I Amanda. Like, which, which, well, I knew. No, I knew that it was going to be rigged for me from day one. But other than that, I don't think it was rigged for anybody. Okay. Um, what do you think the Big Brother ratings are going to be against the NFL kickoff tomorrow night? I don't. I don't know. Our, like, I don't know anything about sports. Are people into the NFL kickoff? Is that something everyone's going to want to watch? Yeah. Uh, not that many people are into the NFL kickoff. Not. Not that many. Okay. Not that many. Uh, okay. No, it's it's going to be like do like a you know thirty million. Four or people. five. Yeah, uh, I don't. I think the big everything else is going to take a beating. 
Okay, uh, Messine 14. Uh, can we compare the Hitman with Chilltown? No. no. I don't think so. No. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. No, we, we, let's not compare the Hitman with Chilltown. Okay, uh, this is from David, uh, who says, uh, what is better... Uh, what is better to play the game, week by week or all at once, like they said Frankie is playing? Andy, do you have a sense? Uh, what is the better way to play the game? Week by week, 110 million percent. Day by day. It. So, like, well, I feel like, yes, like, I feel like my thing was always, like, what can I do to make sure that next, I feel like play it a week ahead of yourself. Like, I feel like I was, I was always, like, what can I do to make sure that next week, whoever wins won't put me up, you know, or won't nominate me or won't target me. And so that's the best way to play it. I think Derek is playing very similarly. He's hedging all of his bets. He's like he's like covering all of his bases every week, so he's never he's never in any danger. Yeah. All right. Let's do one more question with Andy from Edward Giordano. Was it just me, or did they begin giving Christine and Victoria a more positive edit during this episode? I think that Christine has been getting a more positive overall edit over the last couple of episodes. Uh, not. I know that she's still not a fan favorite, but I think that they've been showing her. Uh, more positively. I think she was most negative when she was trying to get Zach out of the house. But I think that she's been, uh, pr you know, pretty positively edited. Uh, how about Victoria? What do you think the edit is on Victoria, or is there not even one? I mean, I feel like Christine's getting kind of like the everyday relatable person edit, where she's like, oh my god, are you kidding me, Frankie? Like, things like that, you know? But I still feel like Victoria is still getting a joke at it. I don't think that they're doing too much to humanize Victoria. Yeah, the thing about Christine for me is I just feel like she's painted herself into a corner, and I feel like she had not seen where this all was going, and I feel like she did not have a lot of foresight, yeah. and it makes me uh, you know, not like her as much because she just was yeah. unable. She's just sort of like put herself willingly in the situation when she could have made moves earlier in the game, and now I feel well, like she's yeah, sort of lame like duck. Got, yes. She had chances to work with people that she should have taken, and so I do agree with that very much. Yes. Okay. And she's saying this week, you know, like in this episode, that she's fine with Frankie being backdoored, and that's like the number she could use to go after Derek and Cody, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right, so we're going to get ready for tomorrow night. Double eviction should be uh, very, very fun. I know a lot of people probably have the football on one on one on one TV and flipping back and forth with the Big Brother, but it's going to be a very fun night as far as Big Brother goes uh, with the double eviction. We talked to Ian Terry and Matt Hoffman Thursday night, so we're pulling we're pulling out all the big stops against the NFL kickoff on Rob has a podcast. If uh, you can't watch us live, you can always listen to us in the archives. You can subscribe anytime at robhasawebsite.com slash iTunes for our main podcast feed. And then Sunday night, we'll be back with more Big Brother. And then we are going to be shifting over to a new schedule because Big Brother is moving to Tuesday nights uh, to accommodate the new Thursday night NFL. Andy, I know you're pumped up for Thursday night NFL on CBS. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm so excited. Yes. Uh, who do you like? So the 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 first game uh, for the Thursday night NFL kickoff, uh, it's going to be San Antonio versus Portland. Who do you like in the first Thursday night game? Uh, Portland. You know, I'm a diehard Portland fan. Yes. Uh, they look like they have a good team this year. I think that uh, Portland could win the Super Bowl this year. I, I completely agree. I've been keeping up with them very, very closely throughout this whole preseason process, and I think they're looking great. Uh, what do you What do you think about uh, their quarterback, uh, Daniel Hauerbach? Oh, he's fantastic. One of he the best good. quarterbacks I've ever seen. I have him on my fantasy team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it should be very, it should be very fun. All right, so that's going to be on Thursday night. So uh, yeah, Big Brother shifting to Tuesday night and Wednesday night. I believe both those shows are on at 8 p.m. So uh, we'll be live on uh, after both of those shows uh, next week coming up. And then uh, we're getting back into Survivor more and more. Survivor's right around the corner. Andy, are you excited for Survivor 29? I'm so excited. Yeah, I've never missed an episode of Survivor ever, ever in the history of all of Survivor. So I'm very, very excited. Are you excited to see the Twinnies from Amazing Race on Survivor? Eh, whatever. <laughs> are you, do, you, do you know of the Twinnies? 
I do. Yes. Yeah, so I think that's gonna be funny. All right. So we'll see. We'll see that. So this uh, Saturday, Stephen Fishback and I are getting together for the Survivor Think Tank Two. Uh, for everybody who uh, pre-ordered the Forty Nine Laws of Survivor, and also the patrons of Robin's Podcast, so that's gonna be a special show this weekend. Uh, coming up live at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. So a very big weekend coming up. We'll be live after the double eviction. We will see you then. Have a great night, everybody. We'll talk to you again soon.